should get dressed. Like, I think people are waiting for a video. Yeah. But I I kind of like feel like you you stay in my pajamas all day. So, oh yeah, let's let's do pajamas. Welcome to Cosplay Land. I am Alice, and today I'm just going to stay in my pajamas all day because I'm going to be making a onesie, and I thought that would be like the best idea to introduce this video. And also, I don't want to get dressed, so. Yeah, I dressed up for you, somehow, kind of. This time I'm going to be making a onesie, which is like something that you wear as a pyjamas or on top of, a, of your pyjamas and basically I think this winter is going to be cold and with the light going up so much, I thought it would be something handy to do and also something fun because I'm actually going to be wearing these pyjamas to be using it for my Anya cosplay, I have already made the dress, I have made drawer as well, I have made the cloak, but come on, we also needed the pyjamas. So this time I will be making her pyjamas and I will also be making her a chimera toy, which is like super cute and I thought it would be like a nice silly addition to my collection of props. So this time that's what I'm going to be making. I'm not an expert on toys, I'm not a toy maker, so I did try my best for the pattern for the Chimera and I hope you like it. As usual, all my patterns will be available later, so they will be the links in the description and if you are on my Patreon, you already have them all, so that's something that you get when you are in my Patreon, you get all the patterns early and for less than what you will get them on the shop, so if you want to join, just I'll also leave the link in the description as well. This project was fairly easy, it has a few difficult parts like the placket, but if you just want to be doing this onesie for something else, just to be at home, I would recommend you to just skip that part and use the zipper instead, because it's very easy to change it for that. And basically you can do whatever you want with it, you can just change the cuffs, you can just make it into rolled hems, and just modify it as much as you want, because here is just a way of doing it, and you choose what you do with it later on. I'm just going to show you how I did it and then probably after that I'll go back to bed because yeah I just just want to go back to bed today just tired so yeah this is how I made my Anya onesie and the Chimera pattern there you go as usual you start by placing your pattern on top of your fabric as you can see, I did not have enough fabric and had to get some extra for the sleeves. The colour is a little bit different, but I bet you wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't told you. I put some weights on top of the pattern so it wouldn't move, and I cut around the edges, leaving space for the seam allowance. I started by assembling the front of the onesie. With right sides together, I pinned along the front seam, leaving space at the top where I will be placing my placket. Then I could just sew it with my sewing machine. I also pinned and sewed the shoulder seams, but contrary to other occasions, I will not be sewing the sides until later, I am going to be attaching the sleeves in a different way. In order to attach the sleeves, as usual, you want to find the notches that mark the front and the back of your sleeve, and then you have to match them with the ones on your bodies. With the bodies open and right sides together, you can sew the edge, and before you ask me, no, I know this is easier and I know it's amazing and it would be great if you could do it with every single sleeve, but unfortunately you can't use this method to sew any other type of sleeve. This method only seems to work with stretch fabrics and low shoulder patterns. I have checked. There's only a few more steps to complete this pattern. First, I will be closing the inner thigh and the crotch. Make sure you align the center seam first before you sew it. 
And once again with right sides together, you can now close the sleeves and the sides in one go. Once your onesie is in one piece, you want to finish the cuffs and the collar. For this, I am going to be using a rip knit stretch fabric. You can buy pre-made cuffs if you want, but I found making my own was much cheaper and it doesn't take long to prepare. I only need to iron my rectangles in half and sew the edges before I folded them again. But before I attach the cuffs, I am going to finish the collar. I used a long strip of folder rib knit, which was slightly shorter than the opening, and I stretched it slightly so they both matched. If you cut the rib knit the same size as the opening, it will run wide on the top and you want to avoid that. Try to find the center points and match them to the collar, and pull your collar slightly while you are sewing it so it stretches as wide as your collar. To make sure your collar stands up, top stitch the edge, making sure you catch all the seam allowance underneath. And now, Milena is going to explain how to insert a placket. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I see. So that's how you do it, huh? Interesting. I'll, I'll try it. Maybe I need to explain it again. Here is how to do it. I draw a line that represents my seam allowance. That is also the center of my onesie. And I want to make sure my placket is in the center. I also marked the center of my placket and drew a line for my seam allowance as well, because that part will be hidden. So you want to measure from the folded edge to the seam allowance line. The width of the placket is about 3 cm, which means you want it sewn halfway through, that is 1.5 cm away from the center. And be careful, this is from the center where you drew the line of your seam allowance, not from the very edge. This is exactly the same for the other side. If you place your placket on top of your opening, you will see it fits perfectly aside from the seam allowance of the edge. But of course, we want to hide that raw edge, so I am turning my placket to the side and matching the lines I just drew. Here you can see it from another angle. The blue crosses represent the seam allowance of the bodies which I want to discard. The black line is where my placket will sit, and the pink lines represent the seam allowance of the placket. You can see the center of the placket matches the center of the bodice. And I am going to be sewing the edge of the placket to the opening, so when I turn it, the edge will be hidden and the placket will still sit at the center. So I am matching the pink part to the pink part. It sits right on top of each other. When I sew this part and turn it, it will all be in the right position. But before I sew the sides in place, I am going to prepare the top edge. I just had to turn the placket and sew the top before I turn it right side out. And now I can just sew the placket following the line. I did exactly the same for the other side. If you did it correctly, it should look like this. And when you turn the plackets, they should sit exactly on top of each other. Which side goes on top will depend on the closing method you choose, 
Personally, I hate sewing buttonholes, like honestly you can't imagine how much I hate it. So the side that will have the buttons will be on top for me and I'll be sewing the push buttons on the inside. But before I do that, I need to finish the bottom edge. I am going to be drawing a triangle shape at the bottom of my opening. And I will be cutting towards the edges, being very careful not to cut any threads. Notice that I go as far as the seam allowances. I am also going to trim the excess fabrics beyond the seam allowances, as I don't need it anymore. Just make sure to leave your triangle intact. Decide which side will be on top. Then turn it upside down so the seam line matches the triangle you drew before. Place the other side of the placket on top and sew the three fabrics together. Same as what you did with the collar, you want to top stitch around the placket to make sure the fabric faces the right way. And you can now sew the buttons in place. It's almost nap time, so let's just finish this cosplay before Melina falls asleep. My cuffs weren't particularly stretchy, so I had to gather the sleeve and leg openings using a long stitch, so they matched my cuffs. I placed my sleeve inside my cuffs and matched the seams. Then I pulled the thread to gather the extra fabric to fit my cuff. I then sew it in place and did exactly the same for the leg openings. But of course, you can't have a 1C without a sleeping hat, so I also made one. I just sew this triangular piece of fabric and added some white stars with a stencil. If you want to know more about this process, I give you a better explanation on my Your Forge video tutorial. The only thing left to do was my Chimera plush toy. For this, I will be using remnants of fabrics that I had at home. Ideally, you want to get very soft fleece or plush fabric, but I had to do with some brushed cotton and other sort of things that I had at home. Also, you want to be using some cotton polyfill, but again, I did not have any, so instead I used pieces of fabric and a little bit of wadding that I had from a previous project that I made into tiny bits. I am not a toy maker, so I'm just going to go through the process very quickly. First you need the pieces for your chimera. Then you want to cut the pieces with the right colours. Remember to add seam allowances. For the wings, I decided to add some fusible interfacing. I closed all the darts on my pieces and sewed the first segments together. Most of them are the same piece sewn on top of each other. The only difficult part was sewing the circular piece to the bottom of the body. And I also sewed the tongue of the snake to the inside of the fabric. And of course Melina wasn't happy with the new family member. I also trimmed the excess fabric so it would be much easier to turn the pieces later on. This is particularly important with the pieces that are curved. I 
I then sand all my pieces with the right side out. Notice that I made a hole on the feet to turn them, as it will be hidden with the legs later on. And I also top stitched some details on the wings. I assembled the head next, and for this I attached the mane to the back piece first. Then I sandwiched it with the other piece of the head on top. Don't forget to leave an opening when you sew it, so you can turn it later. I stuffed each piece separately with my polyfill. Make sure there is enough inside. Finally, I assembled the pieces together using a leather stitch. Once I had glued the smaller pieces with fabric glue, this was the final result. you enjoyed this project. I had a lot of fun making it and I am sure this pattern will be very handy for this coming winter. Remember that you can find the pattern for the onesie and everything else in the description box, and you also have access to all my patterns early if you decide to join my Patreon. There you can find a lot of extra content like sketches, behind the scenes, work in progress pictures and photos of my cats, because we love cats. All the details for Anya are now finished and I can't wait to take pictures of them. I will be making a video, so if you want to see it, make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you get to see it first. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye! Melina. Absolutely not.